Hi there folks, welcome to Dunsey's Guitar World or welcome to a Friday evening in Edinburgh Under the light A couple of weeks ago I unboxed a guitar from Japan A nice black guitar with an inlay front And some very well made appointments It's probably an expensive guitar and it was made So today's video is all about Who can help me identify the manufacturer of this guitar And here is that fine guitar Beautiful. Who made it? What is it? It's Japanese, I think. I'll look at some websites in a bit. They may explain who made it, why it was made, who it was made for. But it does appear to be a copy of a Zamitis style guitar. It has the ornate bridge that the Zamitis guitars had. Zamitis, Zamitis, you say potato, I say potato. So it does have the same kind of appointments as them. It has the engraved bridge as well and the engraved truss rod cover. And up here is a, it is an ebony fingerboard and it has two octaves, it has 24 frets but there are no distinguished marks anywhere on it, there's no made in Japan, there's no serial number on the back or anything like that it's easy to play as well, I used it at rehearsal the other day there, it sounded great in fact let's listen to some clean sounds and some overdriven sounds Let's look at the specs of the guitar, look at the size of the neck, the width of the neck and all that sort of thing. I mean it's a light guitar, it's not heavy at all, very comfortable to play. Let's look at the neck specs. 43.86 millimetres, nut width. And the width of the 12th fret, 52.37 millimetres. The neck depth, 1st fret, 20.29 millimetres. And the neck depth at the 12th fret 20.95 so it doesn't get doesn't get much sort of fatter as it goes down it's got a slim neck which isn't really my thing normally but I've, I've been finding it comfortable to play there's a neck profile so it doesn't get chunkier as such it just almost gets wider you know like kind of going like that as, as you're going down towards the uh, the dusty end of the fretboard and it's a gibson scale 24.75 inches scale pickup measurements they're not huge output pickups, sort of classic PAF, I guess. 7.78 on the bridge, 3.89 in the middle, and 7.79 on the neck. So here's what I could find on the internet. This is guitarsjapan.com. Now they have other Japanese brands and they have Tune. This company primarily made bass guitars of incredible, incredible, professional quality and unique design but they also had a thing for making Zematis copies Tune made a few different models mainly the Hearts and Wild versions they are rare and valuable today and Tune models differ from the Kids models Kids must be another brand that made Zematis copies in that they have six petals on the adjusting bolt flower of the bridge I better check mine has six petals 
on the adjusting bolt flower of the bridge whereas kids Zumatis copies have 8 petals Oh, could be the clue they were looking for On the adjusting bolts, tune is also noted for their intricate in, intricate, easy for me to say, engraving on the tail pieces on these guitars. Zephyr. So this was sold to me at the auction as a tune Zephyr ZST158. Anyway, so Zephyr. Zephyr copies that are made in Japan and Korea. A few ways to tell them apart as the Korean ones are junk. <laughs> but the Japanese ones are really nice. Both versions of the ZST models, but the Japanese... Sorry, both versions are ZST models, but the Japanese versions have zemitis like tail pieces and bridges. The Korean models have the Les Paul style bridges and stop bar tail pieces. So mine definitely has the more intricate tail piece and bridge. Also, the Korean models have multiple pieces of wood for the neck headstock. Japanese versions have a one-piece mahogany neck. Both versions have nice abalone inlay work though of the same quality and design. Now, I asked my mate Mike about this. Mike has a couple of metal-fronted Greco Zematuses and he said he reckons these were made in the 90s prior to Greco getting the contract to make Zematus guitars and they seem to be more accurate compared to the new Greco's more accurate relative to the original Zematus guitars. One thing he did point out, which I'll show you in a second, the strap locks on the original Zematis guitars were off-centre. Well, you know how most strap locks on guitars are right in the middle of the body. The original Zematis ones were off-centre, which apparently gave the guitar a better balance. But the person who owned this before me has actually moved it back to where it should be. Hope you can see that. So they plugged that and moved it back. And it's definitely off-centre there at the back. But again, the person before me has moved it to there. There's definitely been a lot of work put into this guitar. So one thing about it, and I have seen this on a few other Japanese guitars, a couple of Yamahas definitely, and a uh, Burnley that I had, there is clouding in the finish. It's underneath the lacquer as well. I'll try and catch it on a few close-ups. And it's actually, it's not even just cloudy. There's actually spots underneath. The Burnley that I had was cloudy in that there was just some cloudiness under the finish but here there's there's actually spots under the finish let's have a look at a close-up there's nothing you can do about it other than strip the whole thing off and start again so i'm just going to have to live with it but you don't notice we're more than three or four feet away i mean if i'm on stage People aren't even going to go. It's a nice guitar, but it's a bit cloudy. There you have it, folks. It's a mystery, as Toya said. It's a mystery. Tune by Divisor. Might be, might be. If you have any ideas who may have made this guitar, please do let me know in the comments. But suffice to say, it is very nice. At the end of the video, I've done a jam track, put that together with some clean sounds, some overdriven sounds, and you can hear what it sounds like. It's pretty good, I have to say. It's a pretty good guitar. As ever, folks, it's a privilege and a pleasure bringing you content on Dunsey's Guitar World. Cheers for now.